We're about legacy leadership and community, and that's why it ties so well with Baltimore and this community, because we really are about black tourism, black excellence, and black education. The CIAA tournament returns to Baltimore, but it will look a lot different. The work that's gone in to the arena, and also what the tournament has to offer to Charm City. And hello everyone, I'm Jason Newton. Welcome to this edition of 11 TV Hill. We are here at CFG Bank Arena. If you're old school, this is the Baltimore Civic Center. But let me tell you, it looks and feels nothing like it did years and years ago. A lot of work has gone into this building, even just a year ago when the CIAA tournament had the soft opening for what became a really big arena. This morning, what that tournament is bringing to Baltimore. But first, we'll begin with the building itself. And Frank Remish, he's the GM, and he's seen it all from the start. And Frank joins us now. Good to see you, man. Nice to see you also. We talked about the vision for this place not that long ago. Did we meet what you expected? Wow, it was incredible. <laughs> I had I hesitated a little bit when we spoke in, when we were sp speaking earlier, yeah. and it's met all my expectations. It's been an absolutely incredible run. What is it about it for the casual person? You know, I come in and the first thing I noticed was the, the concourse where elephants and monster trucks come through. You need a shirt and tie now. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah right? exactly. <laughs> you know, I love all the enhancements for the patron. It's absolutely phenomenal. The bathrooms, the concession stands, the, uh, the hallways, the open floor plan on the, on the second level now that you can see all the way through. But what really makes this arena what it is now is the operational enhancements inside this building, mm. inside the bowl here. It's, it's not having the ceiling where we can rig faster, um, not having the stage so it gives us more access to our garage, and that, that gets spans in and out of here faster mm. without a move-in day, so it's, it's more conducive for the, all the events that are out there right now. And you're talking about that move-in day, and I think that's what people are realizing right now. You're able to have a show one day, and then two days later, someone completely different, and their staging is ready to go, it seems like. Well, I'll one-up you on that one. Uh, so we had SZA in the building, which was sold out, and we had 27 trucks. She moved out all her gear by 3.30 a.m. At 4.15, we had 30 trucks in the building with Queen. Good grief. Back to back. Well, you could have trucks. never done that probably in three days in the old building. Get we did it within here. hours. So that's what Baltimore can do. Look, Baltimore was always an A market. Yeah. We just never quite had the A building. Now we have a building that can handle it, and that's why the promoters are coming. Well, that's what my curiosity was. I mean, what, what can be so different between, you know, 10 years' time? Because it seems like, I mean, you go by the billboard now, and it's just name after name after right. name. Right, right. Well, again, time is money. Yeah. And when, when we would have to give up a pre-rig day, if we had, let's say, Bruce Springsteen coming on a Saturday, and I had to give Friday for a pre-rig, well, I lose the date, and it also adds a cost to Bruce Springsteen sure. and his staff, right? So it just didn't, it, it was easy to bypass Baltimore. Now that we have that speed, and of course we sell tickets, that's the number one game. Right. You sell tickets, you make it easier for the, the, the shows to move in and move out, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's money. And then there's an incredible bunch of enhancements that we have in the uh, back the dressing room areas and, and the artist lounges and things that just make them more comfortable. You, you do, you're doing something that you notice a lot uh, down at MT Bank Stadium with the Ravens as well. The experience starts the moment you get out of your car. So they have the Ravens walk and then you see bands and there's beer and then you get to see the football game. And I feel like you do the same thing here. And we were in this, this fearless club. I mean, you haven't even seen the bowl yet, no. but you've already had an experience. That's something we've never done before. And, and with the fearless club, we actually have two clubs we have the fearless club and club 1962 which is is a uh, is a playoff of the building being built in 1962 and it allows the fan experience for it's a small upcharge i think it's 30 or 40 dollars sure. and they get a free drink which ends up being about an 18 dollar va uh, value gets them in you have the atmosphere you have the unbelievable food that's the other thing we didn't yeah. have before i, I have i have a, a chef on board now nice. so you have this really nice catering um the suites in the old building, we had two suites. Now we have 38. Uh, it's just—it's a whole different experience, as you said. CIAA saw a completely different venue last year. What will they experience this year? Yeah, I, and again, it's hard for me to put down my old building. I loved it. It's 35 years in the business. I've been 35 years in the business, and I love my old building. But it, you can't compare it. Huh. The CIA had to build out a lot of the suites. They had to make suites from hallways, basically. Now we have great suites. So it, again. They love it. Um, Commissioner uh, Jackie just is, is just thrilled to be here. Uh, um, TV lights, uh, NBA quality TV lights now. Uh, the sound system's phenomenal. 
uh, the basketball, enhanced basketball floor, we're, we're ready to go. Everything's ready to go. What people don't know is that Frank was an electrician here when he started, worked his way all the way up. As this construction's going on, did you want to pick up the tool? I know, belt? right? Did it, you want to come and just put one light bulb in? But here's the bad thing now. Now I don't know where anything is. I don't know how to fix anything anymore, so I'm stuck, you know, polishing a chair with myself. <laughs> so. Well, well I'll only talk to you about one show, because really it's the only one that people want to know about. If they saw the Super Bowl halftime show, it'll practically be right back here in Baltimore. Exactly. We have two ushers, yeah. August 23rd and 24th. I hope I got that right. Yeah. Um, and again, that just, that's indicative of all the events that we're doing. Ba Baltimore is, is such an incredible town and is so diversified. No matter what you put, whether it's country, Christian, urban, gospel, it doesn't matter. We sell everything out. Yeah. Um, you, we'll go from 20 concerts back in pre-COVID time to 60 now. We'll go wow. from three A's, three wow. A concerts to 40. Yeah. Um, and that's what we did. That's what, at the end of this, October, uh, April 8th will be one year. Wow. And that's what you'll see. Well, as a kid who grew up at the Civic Center, this place has grown up along with me, Frank. Totally great. To hey, thank you very nice much. Work. Take care. Thank Certainly. you.